والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طحاها ونفس وما سواها ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها Which means, by the sun, and by the way it rises, and by the moon, and the way it follows, and by the day, and the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it an open space and light for us to see, and by the night, and how it encompasses and envelopes you, and by the nafs. What is a nafs? It is you, yourself. It is made up of three elements, the soul, the mind, and the body. These three make the nafs. When you die, you don't have a nafs. When you are resurrected, your nafs comes back because it's made up of the soul, the mind, and the body. Each one has its nourishment. This nafs has its desires and the way Allah fashioned it. He gave it the tendency to, be, to become extremely boastful and extremely evil. And he gave it the tendency to also be extremely pious, extremely. Whoever purifies it and grows it has truly succeeded. And he or she who obeys it has truly devalued it, degraded it, destroyed it and lost and failed. So the desires within us never leave us. And these desires have the tendency to be the best or the worst. I'll give you an example. Have you ever pondered and wondered what will happen to you if you were in the middle of the desert without any food or water and you have enough, a few drops of water maybe to make you survive a few days, but your hunger, your hunger is so intense. One week, two weeks, you can't move anymore and suddenly your friend besides you dies. Do you think that you'll be the type of person who will turn and think about eating your friend? What do you think? Who will eat their friend? Chop off a little, maybe a finger and nibble on it a little bit. What do you think? You think you'd do that? It's disgusting, isn't it? Let me give you another example. God forbid, if you were imprisoned inside of a dungeon and I'm going to just disgust you a little bit, Malish, because I've got a point to make. And you have no food. You have water, but no food. And you get so hungry to the point where you see that other people were in this prison before and they died there. And you see a little bit of dried blood on the floor. You get so hungry to the point where you know you're going to die, or if you take it, or if you maybe you know, take a little bit of that dried blood, you may survive. What would you do? You'd probably get on the floor and try to lick that blood off. Some humans would do that. And a human being can get to a point where they can become cannibals. They become murderers. They'll do anything to survive. Am I right or wrong? A human being can become like that, guys. That's why we hear about people like, you know, serial killers. We hear about, you know, names like pedophiles. We hear about these rapists, murderers. We hear about crazy, psychotic people. What led them to become like that? The nafs can become the most evil and disgusting thing if you let it go and obey it. You know that? And if a normal human being, if it's a matter of survival or death or survival, they will do the most impossible. The things that you would never dream of. At the same time, the human being can rise so high. Have you heard of human beings? who if it's a matter of survival or death and their brother is out there in the middle of the desert with them and they have a little bit of water that's only enough for one of them and then they would rather die and let their brother or their sister drink it to survive another hour 
This is now a soul that has been purified. Allahu Akbar. A person who will jump in front of a truck to save another person. A person will sacrifice everything they have to give for others even if it meant they would die. This is, there is a story about in, in the Battle of Tabuk when there were three companions and one of them, he was the son of Amr ibn al-As He brought some water to the Muslims who were still dying, thinking of, you know, seeing if there was anyone alive. And then he heard one of the companions call out saying, water, water. So he came up to this person and he tried to give him water. And then suddenly he heard a second person dying in the fields saying, water, water. The person who was dying, he said, give the other, give my brother water before you come to me. I will not drink a drop. So he went to the second person. And then when he reached the second person, the second person heard a third person crying out, water, water. He said, Wallahi, I won't drink a drop of its water until you let the other person drink. So he went to the third person. When he arrived, the third person had died. So he raced back to the first person. He had died. Went back to the second person. He had died. Allah praises these types of souls. These types of people, they would sacrifice their own needs even though, and they would give to others even though they would be more in need than the others who they were chari charitable to. Yes, this type of nafs can rise even above the angels because the angels bowed down to this nafs, Adam alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam is not the best of Allah's creation. The angels are a better creation. I can even show you creatures that, mashallah, have superior nature to us. It is not this body. It is the soul. The soul is a special creation and we have to nurture it. When you look after this soul, you can rise to a point where the angels bow down to you and you become better than them. But if you obey the nafs, however, your soul begins to die and the nafs becomes so disgusting, so evil, so low to the point where Allah describes it to be even lower than the animals. Don't you realize that Allah says some type of people become so evil that they become like the an'am, like the livestock, like animals. Some of them, their souls are so dead that they are even literally less than the animal, more lost than the animal.